high stress, you're gonna play the guitar. So this is gonna be your guitar strings. You're gonna, you have two, two guitars. One guitar right here, two guitars right here. So you're gonna find the middle of your guitar and you're going to push. So you're gonna also push from the both sides. You're gonna grab like this, right? This is for stress. When you're all stressed out, your neck, shoulders all tight. So you're gonna play the guitar. You're gonna play the guitar all the way down your arm. Press hard, okay? And while you're playing the guitar, move your head. Move your head to the music, okay? You're gonna play the guitar. Do it both hands. You got two guitars, right? Play both guitars and just move your head, bobble your head, and you'll start to realize your neck and shoulders start to relax. So keep on playing the guitar. Play it strong, okay? I'm using my thumb on the inside side and my fingers on the outside my four fingers on the outside I'm just playing the guitar going up and down all right play the guitar to decrease your stress follow me here I have uh, thyroid issues to include Hashimoto's uh, disease and have had other flare-ups of similar or not similar but other autoimmune diseases and so I had concerns that current medicines uh, really were not helping me in the long run to prevent other flare-ups and other autoimmune diseases, as well as just reducing my uh, overall Hashimoto's concerns. So I started into the program um, with my husband. I definitely recommend having your life partner, whoever goes through it with you at the same time. And we both uh, stuck with the program, very much so through the detox, and which was a challenge, but was so worth it, and then through uh, the next phases, as I went along, I could just start to feel, even coming off of caffeine, how much more energy I had and how much I didn't have to depend on caffeine of any sort to kind of get me through the day. My energy levels improved and I just watched over this whole time my numbers go down as far as indicators for autoimmune diseases uh, with thyroid and just uh, other tendencies t towards those things, vitamin Ds was a problem for me and those numbers with assistance uh, you know and guidance really has come through and I'll just say Jimmy can explain things in a way that makes it relevant to you and makes you understand okay there's actually three things that really directly affect the liver function and damage the liver right and so they're called the three stresses so the three stresses there's three stresses that actually can directly impact the functioning of your liver um, and so the three stresses are emotional chemical and physical and so I'm not going to talk about the emotional and chemical today because today we're talking about movement so we're gonna talk about the physical stress so physical stress what is physical stress physical stress is actually two things uh, not enough exercise not enough movement okay and then the opposite too much exercise or too much movement right both those at the opposite end of the spectrums can damage your liver function it can cause your liver to stop doing some of its jobs uh, uh, you know every organ has millions of jobs and so uh, you know the damage from physical stress for example let me give you an example so not enough exercise. Everybody knows if you don't move enough, you don't exercise enough, then blood's not going to circulate. Of course, not, it's not just your liver. Your every organ in your body is not going to function correctly, right? And so, not enough exercise is vi is obviously vitally important for your your organ function. The second thing is too much exercise. How can you exercise too much? Well, if you look at you know what needs to happen when you exercise, you generate waste. All, a lot of that waste needs to be processed by through your liver. And so when you're, gener when you're exercising way too much, you're gener generating so much waste that your liver is not having the time to be able to eliminate that waste effectively. And so what happens, you start accumulating waste, right? And so even though, you know, people like marathon runners or people who did uh, those uh, Iron Man, right? They look pretty cool, Iron Women, they look pretty cool and they look pretty fit and even like those but fitness trainers, you know, they, they're super cut and you know, they got muscles everywhere popping out everywhere And so they look super fit, but in, in actuality majority of them are not functioning well internally Externally they look great, but internally they're not doing so hot, right? And so we're talking about internal we're talking about liver function and today I'm talking about how Exercise can actually damage your liver now some people are gonna be thinking oh man, you know 
thank you for this information. Now I'm going to stop exercising. No, that's not what I'm trying to say. You have to find the happy medium for your body. You can't be at either spectrum. You can't do nothing and you can't do too much. Now that's different for every single person. You have to find that happy medium for your specific body because everybody's body is different. Everybody has different functionings. Everybody has different ha habits, lifestyle habits, dietary habits, uh, stress habits, and so forth. So you have to look at your body and, and it takes practice. You're not going to be able to think about it and just instantly say, oh, I only need to run you know, three days out of the week instead of five days out of the week. And it doesn't work that, like that. So every week you attempt to, you, you know, you go out and you exercise and look at your recovery rate. If your recovery is super slow, then you're overtaxing your body and that's damaging your liver. Okay. So then, you know, maybe you do one exercise and you're like, man, I don't even really feel sore. I don't really even really feel the, the effects of the exercise. Well, you're not doing enough. Okay. So get off your butt and do some more. All right. Do some jumping jacks or something. So it's really, you know, you're going to have to teeter totter and you're really going to have to find that, that really that, that sweet zone, right? Just, I would say start off slow and then gradually increase your movements, increase your exercise and pay attention to your recovery time. Okay. Pay attention to that. And, um, that's probably, I would say, that for at-home purposes on how to monitor if you're doing too much. So if it takes you three to four days to recover, you're doing way too much exercise for your body at this current state. It's not saying that you won't be able to do more as you improve, but at your current state, you're not. Usually it should take about a day or so, uh, a day or so to recover from your exercise, okay? Now, yes, it varies depending on what exercise you do. The heavy body lifters, uh, weight lifters, you know, they, they're tearing muscle like crazy. So it's going to take, uh, you know, quite a few days to re rebuild and regenerate. I'm just talking about the norm, the average, you know, weekend warrior, the average person like you and me who, you know, we're, that's not our job. Our, not, our job is not to, to, to compete in bodybuilding or fitness um, or any type of sport. Our, our, you know, we have you know, other responsibilities. I'm talking about the, the daily person and weekend warrior, I would say. Okay. So important thing is movement is vitally important, but you can't do too much and you can't do too little because it actually can damage your liver from either way. All right, guys.